Welcome back. Now the demo that I'm going to do, I'm calling rotating platform and a coin. I'm going to get this platform rotated, right? I'm, uh, I've uh, taped a, a card to it, so I know the width of the card is 0.054 meters. And then I have my digital timer here. The digital timer will tell me how long that card has blocked that uh, beam, right? And then you, I can divide the width of the card by that time. I can find out the tangential velocity of the tip of the, the rotating platform. And then if I know the radius of the platform, I can find out the angular velocity, right? So the radius of the platform I already know is 11.4 centimeters. So that's going to be 0.114 meters, right? Radius of the disc, okay? So then I'm going to ask, uh, if I rotate this at a certain rate, where along the where along the rotating platform can I put a coin where it safely still turns? Right. If I put it at the center, then of course the coin does not fall off. Right. Pretty much, no matter how fast I spin it, the coin doesn't fall off because at the center there's only rotational velocity. The coin is just rotating; it's not translating. Right. Now, if I put it a little bit farther from the center. So let's say about uh, let's say about three centimeters, right? So then I get it going. It's still not falling off, right? Of course, if I make it go faster, it might fall off. But let's say I don't touch the speed of the object, the speed of the rotation. All I do is change the distance. Okay. Let's say I now make it. Uh, now let's say I make it eight centimeters. All right, so this is about eight centimeters. I get it going, it's still safe, right? So, so far we're still pretty good. Now, how about if I put it way at the edge, okay? You see it fell off because at the edge, it has a lot of tangential velocity, okay? So then what, uh, what I could do is a good physics problem. I can get it going at a certain rate and then I can find out the largest distance that that coin can be. And then from there, I can find out the coefficient of static friction between the coin and the platform, right? If, if once I find out the largest distance. Okay, so let's get this going. Okay, so let's say, let's say that one fell off. Okay. Okay, right there is the largest distance for that particular speed, okay? Okay, so then the time that I'm getting is 0 0.0662, right? Now let me measure the distance, okay? So the time here is 0 0.0, 0 0.0662 seconds, right? And uh, the distance from the center of the coin to the middle of the platform is four point two centimeters. Okay, so the coin is somewhere here. Four point two centimeters. Okay, so then. Uh, what is the physics of this? Let's do the free body diagram on the coin. We have the coin like this, right? Then we have here uh, the normal force on the coin, and we have the weight of the coin, mg, right? What is the force allowing the, what is the force allowing the coin to uh, experience a centripetal acceleration towards the center, right? That force is mu sn. In other words, at the point where the coin is the farthest distance away possible, the friction, static friction force is equal to the maximum possible that it can be, right? And that's equal to mu Sn, right? If I bring it any closer than that, then the friction force does not have to equal mu Sn. It can be smaller, right? But if, as I take it further out, further out, the largest distance it can be is at the point where the friction force equals mu s n, right? So then we're going to say mu s n is equal to m v squared over r, right? And then n is equal to m g, okay? So the mass of the coin cancels. So then I have mu s g is equal to v squared over r. So what is the velocity of the coin? 
That's a velocity of coin. Well, we don't really know the velocity of the coin, but we do know the velocity of the edge of the uh, uh, rotating platform, right? V tangential of the edge. So let's get this data. V tangential of the edge of the platform is going to be the width of the card divided by 0.0662, okay, per second, okay? So if the edge of the platform is going at 0.816 meter per second, how fast is the coin going? Well, we can argue that the rotational, uh, uh, the angular speed of the rotating platform is the same, right? So the V tangential at the edge, which is equal to the radius of the disk times omega, and the V, v, v of the coin is equal to the, the distance of the coin, we can call it little r times omega, right? The omega is the same. So in this problem, I don't really need to solve for omega, the rotational angular speed of the, the platform. I can just argue that the two omegas are the same, therefore the coin is traveling slower than the edge of the platform, right? Because it is closer to the center of the platform. So we can say V coin over R is equal to V edge over RD. So we can say V coin is equal to R over RD times V edge. Okay, so what is the, the distance? The distance from here to here is 4.2 centimeters. Okay, what is the radius of the disc? Uh, it's 11.4 centimeters, right? I can keep them in centimeters or meters. As long as they're the same units, they're gonna cancel out. So I can put here 11.4 centimeters, then multiply it by the velocity of the edge, 0.816 meters per second, and then the centimeter, centimeter will cancel. So I have 0 0.300, so pretty much 0.3 meters per second, okay? So then you're gonna put here 0.3, and then you're gonna square it. Now what R should I divide by here? Well, this is mu s n is mv squared over R, so the, uh, the r that I use should be equal to the little r, the radius of the, the distance of the coin from the center, right? So I have here the little r, right? You're not using the total uh, radius of the disk, right? So you're gonna do here, the little r is gonna equal, uh, now I change this to the meters, right? 0 0.042 meters, 0 0.042 uh, meters, right? So this one is meter per second squared, the meter cancel, this is meter per second squared, and then the mu s comes out to be a unitless constant, right? So 0.22. So that's actually a reasonable result for coefficient of static friction between a, a coin. The coin is a, a metallic, so it's gonna be smoother. So it's the, mu, the coefficient of static friction is gonna be lower than some other materials, right? So yeah, it doesn't make sense that the coefficient of static friction is 0.22. Right, and um, we calculated this. So you could have a good physics problem that it could, it could actually give you this constant and it could say, what's the furthest out that the coin can be, right? So, or it can give you the rotational velocity of the, uh, the platform or anything else. The other way to solve this is in terms of the omega, right? If you wanted to actually solve it in terms of omega, how would you rewrite this? Okay, so you would say, mu s n, and then n replaces by mg, and then the m cancel, right? And then the v, you would put what? The v, the velocity of the coin would be the little r times omega, right? Little r times omega, quantity squared over r. Then you get here r omega squared. So mu s is equal to r omega squared over g, right? So if you know the rotational velocity in radians per second of the platform, right, you can square that and then multiply it by the distance of the coin from the center over G. So that's a different approach. So then in order to do it that way, I would have to take the, remember the, the velocity of the, the, the tangential velocity of the edge of the platform was 0.816, B was 0.816. So then you would set that equal to RD omega, and then you would say 0.816, the RD is 0.114, so you would actually calculate the omega. And then the omega would come out to be 0.8. So the platform was rotating at seven radians per second. So a problem could start out with that information. 
It could say there's a platform rotating at a certain radiance per second. Where can the coin be placed so that it does not slip? What's the furthest out it can be placed? And the problem can tell you what the coefficient of static friction is. Then you would use this version of the equation. So you would say here mu s, r would be the distance of the coin from the center, so 0.042. And then the omega squared would be 7.16 squared over 9.8. Of course, if you did everything right, you should still get 0.22. So, and you get 0.22, same, same answer, right? 0.22. So now you can see a good problem. This is a good problem in centripetal acceleration. It's also a good problem with uh, Newton's law, mu uh, friction, and Newton's law f equals ma, and the fact that the maximum value of fs is mu sn. And it's also a good problem with rotational velocity and speed, the concept that uh, V is equal to R omega. So it brings a lot of topics into one and utilizes it to uh, analyze the, the position where the coin can be so that it does not slide off the table, okay? Thank you very much.